Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing. So it's 4th of July weekend, so that means it's time to work on something patriotic. And we have a tutorial. It was one of our very first tutorials and very first patterns we put together over at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. And it works for a quilt of valor and it's fat quarter friendly. So we are going to replay that for you today. It's one of my favorite combinations because we are gonna combine a star block with a log cabin. So we talk about how to make your flying geese four at a time to save you a boatload of time and fabric waste because there is none when you make your flying geese this way and then also we talk about how to make sure you sew those log cabins so they don't stretch out on you and then you end up with a block that a block that's kind of wonky we don't want that also this uh, time what we've done is we put together some new fat quarter bundles just for you so in this pattern you need one consistent white it doesn't have to be a solid it can be we have uh, some white blenders that could work too but we put together a stars and stripes fat quarter bundle so these are basics in our shop and a basic is basically like a supporting player for your quilt but it also is really great whenever you just want to read color and in this case we wanted to read red and we wanted to read blue so that our stars and our stripes in those log cabins can stand out so if you get the stars and stripes fat quarter bundle you will have what you need to do the center of your quilt then you just need to pick out your first border your second border and your body so you can do that from your stash if you got something patriotic you can get something on our website it's totally up to you what you want to do but this bundle plus two and a half yards of any white will get you what you need to make your quilt center and then you can just say something coordinating for your borders and your binding and it'll be super cute let's take a quick look at these fabrics and then we'll watch the tutorial so one of my favorite parts is getting scrappy and that's what these fat quarters are so we have a couple of different fabric manufacturers here this one's from art gallery we've got this really fun little diamond pattern in there this was one of the Violet Craft ones from her new basics collection. These next two are from Dear Stella. So these are some of their basics, a nice dot and a star. And the rest, I believe, are Violet Craft. So we've got the rest of the reds, and then we are moving on into the blues. Now, of course, you can always mix and match your own blues in here if you want, but they're really fun, they're really cute, and they're gonna make a great Stars and Stripes. Now, let's go watch the tutorial. Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stepping. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make the Stars and Stripes quilt pattern that's available on quiltaddictsanonymous.com. This was originally designed to be part of a fabric exchange, but you could also make it with a fat quarter bundle of patriotic fabrics or from your stash by just pulling all the patriotic fabrics that you've collected over the years. This pattern does meet the requirements of a quilt of valor. I'm making one for me and one to give to a veteran to honor them for their service through the Quilts of Valor organization. You can learn more about them at qovf.org. Let's get started. This quilt calls for some log cabin strips, and so I'm going to show you how to cut those using the Marty Michelle method. What I've done is I've already cut this to 18 inches wide. This is a fat quarter that I folded over, so we can see here's my cut edge and here's my selvage edge, and I've just folded that over so those two meet, and then trimmed my sides together nice and square. If you use fat quarters, you're going to want to make sure that it's a true fat quarter, that it is at least 18 inches wide. And I don't recommend that you pre-wash because that might shrink it um, to too small to do this method with. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these so that they are the strips are parallel with the selvage. And that helps make for a more stable strip when we're sewing the log cabin blocks together. So now I need to cut these to one and a half inches wide. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay that out, my ruler, so that my edges are square with the edges of my fabric that I've already trimmed. And then I have my inch and a half mark, which is in just a little bit because I don't want to get that selvage or that fuzzy edge from where the fabric has been cut. I'm just going to take my rotary cutter, cut across, we can pull that up and we can see that that's cut through. Now because this is the first cut, I do need to square up this edge as well. So this time I'm just going to line my one and a half inch line with that edge that I just cut and flip so that it's facing me. And then I can cut the rest. 
and get rid of that salvage. We don't need it anymore. So from here on out, it's pretty easy. We're just cutting every one and a half inches to get the strips that we need for this fabric. So if you're using fat quarter bundles, you can actually layer them up. You can do several at a time and cut through. I've cut through as many as four at a time to do this. And then they're kind of already mixed up a little bit when you go to sew in the next step. So that's kind of fun. You don't have to worry about making it look scrappy. It kind of is already like that. So just go ahead and keep cutting until you run out of room in your fat quarter. But once you're going to do that, then we can cut them for the actual um, log cabin strips. So you're going to want to refer to your instructions, which you can download at quiltaxanonymous.com to make sure that you're cutting these to the right width. Now here's where the magic happens. So I have 11 and a half inches here that I have lined up. So I'm cutting a strip that's one and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches. And now when I pull this other strip up, then I have six and a half inch strip because 11 and a half plus six and a half equals 18. So now here's where more magic happens. So now I need to cut a 10 and a half to get this next strip. So I've got my 10 and a half lined up with my edge and then I have an inch line all along the top of that strip. Go ahead and cut right where that ruler ends. And now we have our 10 and a half strip and our seven and a half strip again because 10 and a half plus seven and a half equals 18. You guessed it, we're gonna do this one more time. This time I'm lining up at nine and a half. I'm gonna cut that strip. And now we have an eight and a half inch piece as well. So now we've cut all the fabrics for actually two of the blocks and you're going to want to do this with your yardage um, or your scrap pile so that you have a bunch of these to choose from when we do the log cabin strips. And then we're also going to do this for the white fabric that is the neutral for this, but the measurements are different. So again, make sure you go to your printable instructions at quiltagsanonymous.com and purchase those so that way you make sure you cut everything to the right size and you're not wanting to shoot yourself because you got the wrong, uh, you have to get more fabric because you cut it wrong. So go check those out and then come on back and we're going to make the center star. We're going to use a no waste flying geese method to make this block. And so what we're going to need is one of the white squares and four of the blue squares in the patriotic fa fabric. Make sure you get your instructions at quiltagsanonymous.com. Just get the stars and stripes pattern and you'll be able to know what size and how many you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the smaller blue fabrics so that the wrong side is up. And I'm going to draw a line from point to point on the wrong side here. And you can kind of see that that's kind of a busier fabric. And I'm just going to do it with two of these for now so that you can see what we're doing here. And if you've never made flying geese using this method before, I think you're going to really like it. There's no waste and I think it's a lot more accurate than the traditional way of making flying geese. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line these up so that the smaller blue squares are right in the corner of this larger white square and they're going to overlap a little bit in the center. You want them to do that. And ideally these lines are going to match up as well. So now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a scant quarter inch down either side of these drawn lines. If you want to you can pin these in place but it's not necessary. So I have everything lined up in my sewing machine and now I'm just going to sew that scant quarter inch seam down both sides of that drawn line. board and we're going to cut these apart right on that drawn line and it's not important that you're super accurate here but you also don't want to get too skinny on either one of these seams because it could pop open on the long arm if you do that. 
So now you're going to take these pieces that we've just cut apart and we're going to press them so that the small blue triangles are going away from the larger white triangle. And if you're doing it right, it's going to look like a heart at this point. Just get that other one real quick. So now we need to draw lines on the wrong side of our other two squares for this unit. And it might be a little hard for you guys to see these lines at home, but what matters is that you can see them on your sewing machine. Got that line. Let's do one more. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your little heart shape here and you're going to lay your square again so it's even with that edge of that larger white triangle and you want your line going up so that it's in between these two heart shapes. And then we're going to sew a scant corner inch seam down either side of this drawn line. seam line so that it comes up a little clearer here. But if you've done this right, then your seam line is going to be coming out right where this little valley is, where these two triangles come together. So now it's time to cut these apart. Again, we're just going to cut it apart right on that drawn line. And accuracy, again, still isn't super important, but you do want to make sure that your seam doesn't get too skinny. So now when you flip these open, you can see that we have some fine geese units and you're gonna get four for every one big white square and four little blue squares. So I'm gonna press these open and then we're gonna trim them to size. Just press that good and flat, that'll help get a more accurate piece a little bit later. So now I need to trim this up and I need to trim it so that it is three and a half inches wide and two inches tall. And if you're a little off, that's okay. Uh, you'll be able to fudge that in a little bit later. I am a little skinny with this one and that's gonna be just fine. So what I'm looking for is that my two inch line is meeting up with these points and that my half inch line, or my quarter inch line rather, is pretty much right where the top of my large triangle is. And once I've got that arranged, then I'm just going to trim, and I'm not trimming off a whole lot. The math is pretty right on for these. Um, but, you know, you may have a little bit of dog ears to trim off here. So now what I'm looking for is I'm making sure that my 45 degree line is right on where these seams come together. And if I'm also still making sure that my point here is right where these fabrics come together and same here. So I'm gonna do a little trimming. Pull that off. And now we have a pretty darn close to perfect flying geese unit. And once it's all sewn together, you won't even be able to tell that this is just a hair skinny. Now you're gonna lay out the pieces for the rest of your star for the center of our block. And from here, it's basically like putting together a nine patch, even though all the pieces aren't the same size in each row. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're just, I like to just do it row by row. So I'll just pull those two together, line them up, and at this point we can just use a regular quarter inch stitch. We don't need to use a scant quarter inch stitch anymore. So I'll just sew that one on. I typically bring it back to the center just to make sure that I'm putting the right piece on the next part. That always helped me from having to rip out stitches later. Nobody likes to do that. Then you just 
keep going down. You know, we've got that top row done, so now we can grab the pieces for the second row. Line those babies up. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see how I sew here. So one of the secrets to getting your flying geese points in it right where you want them to be is to sew just one needle width to the right of where your threads make a little X on that point. I'm going to take my pen and just go over the seam lines here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm outlining where the seams come together and make a little X where your flying geese units are. Now I've sewn so that I'm just one needle width to the right of where that X is. So now I'm going to flip this open. I've got a perfect point on my flying geese unit. So that's a trick. Make sure you do that on all of them. So go ahead and sew the rest of your rows together. Then we're going to press this so that way all of our rows will fit together nicely. So a lot of times you'll hear me and other quilt instructors say that you don't want to press so that a seam is underneath white because it would be a shadow. And that's true most of the time. But in this case, we want to think about what is going to be the easiest way for the fabric to stay flat. So in this case, we are going to press so that that seam allowance is underneath the white because it's going to be better overall for the block. And you'll see why in just a second here. So press that seam. So now for the second piece, I'm going to press so that my fabric is going underneath this big square because it's going to lay a lot flatter than if I tried to press underneath that fine geese unit where we have all those seams coming together right in the center. Go ahead and do the second side here. And here's why this is important to make that change here. So now when I flip these together, my seams are going to be going in the opposite direction, which is going to make it really easy to pin these together to sew them, um, get a really nice join. So I can just go ahead and grab the pins and show you what I mean there. So I'm going to put a pin right in the right side of that seam allowance here. And now my seams are just butted up next to each other they're going in opposite directions, so this is going to make for a really great join when I put it through the sewing machine. So I'm going to sew this together so you can see how great of a join you'll get when you take the time to press your seams in opposite directions. And I'm still paying attention to where that X is on my fine gauge unit so that I can have great points on my star. Alright, take this back over to the ironing board. And actually in this case, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and press that this way. And you can just see how great these points are coming together and as well as my fine keys because we really have taken the time to pin those nicely and sew in a really great spot. So go ahead and do that for the other side and then your center star is done. Now we're going to start attaching the log cabin strips to our uh, piece here. And I've got everything laid out here. Make sure you also refer to your layout instructions in the pattern that goes along with this. You can get it at quiltaddictonomist.com. Now the next thing we need to do is attach our log cabin strips to our center star. So that's what gives it that stars and stripes look, hence the name of the pattern. So I've got everything laid out here and make sure you refer to your pattern instructions. It'll have step-by-step -step instructions on which piece to attach when. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pull my top piece down and line that up. And there really isn't a top or bottom to your star, so you don't have to worry, you know, if it's a little off a little. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that top piece on. Now we're going to 
going to take it over to the ironing surface. Press that up. We're going to lay that back in place and pull over our next piece. And there are very detailed instructions on which piece to attach when on your pattern. So we're really just going to keep going around and around. I'm going to do this first one with you guys. And then we're going to do some fast forward for the rest of the box so you can see how it goes together. So what I like to do is just line up, get the first few stitches in, and then line up the back. Get those two corners together. But it shouldn't really be too different. These strips should really be the exact size you need them to be because we cut them parallel to that selvage. It makes it a lot more stable when you're using strips. Go ahead and press that. And we're pressing out for every single one that we have from here on out. We'll be pressing out. Lay that back down in place and grab our next piece. Bring it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew again. So I've got everything laid back where it's supposed to go and now we're going to put our last piece on for our first row. And now whenever you're putting the next piece on, there's going to be two seams on the one that you're going for that for those log cabin strips. So here there's one, here there's one, here there's two. So we now know that this is the one that's the next size. It can get a little confusing sometimes because you've got a couple that are the same size. So we've got our first one on. Now we're just going to keep going round and round. I'm going to go ahead and leave the camera running and do a fast forward so you guys can see how it works. This is it. This is the block for the Stars and Stripes pattern. When you put this together with all the others, that's what makes the sort of wavy stripe pattern for the quilt. The pattern is now available for individual sale, so you can do it to make a pattern patriotic quilt for yourself, or you can do it for the Quilts of Valor Foundation. Thanks so much for following along. Visit quiltaddersanonymous.com to get this pattern, and happy quilting! Mm -hmm.